And action. Hey everyone, it's Dr. Rick from Center of Healing. Uh, ben had a question about a whole food plant-based diet and, and how it, uh, or, or ideas about how not to upset diabetes. Now ben has medicines for diabetes. It's very early, it's type two. And Ben also has other things that uh, lung disease and weight issues and a couple other things that um, uh, get thrown into the mix. So it makes it a very complicated thing to do, but I think when you have anything autoimmune, or for that matter, high risk for cancer, um, cholesterol, heart attack, you really should move away from animal products as much as possible. I'm saying that because I practice it, but it is hard to get to that from a standard American diet. If you're used to eating hamburgers, hot dogs, French fries, and Coke, uh, and and scrambled eggs in the morning uh, and steak for dinner, that, then it's gonna be hard to switch off because it's so reminiscent of the way you grew up. But I think uh, when we look at the standard American diet, look at the standard American diseases, and um, there's the big top three causes for death in the United States are gonna be heart disease, cancer, and stroke. So you have to be careful about what gets you to that level, especially if you're already in your 40s and 50s. Now, if you're, if you're deep into disease, uh, you have to switch fast. If you're just beginning or you're younger, I would take my time. Uh, but in this case, where we're trying to move over to this, it, it, it is tough because with diabetes, um, the knowledge base is that you just get rid of a lot of proteins and fats and you have nothing but uh, plants. And uh, the reflex reaction is, oh, plants means carbohydrates, which does make sense because plants usually have a low amount of fat, unless it's like walnuts or olive oil um, and, and and coconut. You can have fats, but it, in general, most plants have lower protein and lower fats than standard American diet. But I think that's a good thing, right? You don't necessarily have to assume that a whole food plant-based diet will jack up diabetes. Um, in fact, you, there's ways to balance that out. When everybody uh, comes into my clinic, when I, say, when I say switch over to that, they'll always ask me, where do you get your protein from? And I get my protein from plants. I used to be a pescatarian uh, with occasional indulgences during uh, feast times like holidays. I'm Filipino, so you usually go to a holiday function and there's always gonna be, there's usually gonna be meat, especially a big pig. So during holidays, uh, I, I can indulge. I have a lot of leeway to do that. I'm not strict. Um, I'm not an animal rights activist, although I care about animals, but uh, I will indulge during those times. But during the rest of the year, no, I'm, I was pescatarian, but because of a friend of mine, a patient having a heart attack in my office, I decided to go vegan and help him go move away from animal products. And I tell you, I, I think I've dialed it in. And that's why I want to tell Ben, is that we have some allowance to kind of get used to the shift in eating. But you have to be very, very good with planning. And, and that's one of the problems with um, nutrition is that you would think with a 50 hour work week, you don't have time to plan and just go ahead and eat uh, like we all do. And uh, hopefully you won't have any disease, but if you're deep into disease and you don't have any time to plan, well, what's gonna happen is you'll be a prisoner to uh, fast food. It doesn't have to be the fast food industry, fa something fast, because you're gonna be hungry. When you're hungry, you wanna eat. When you wanna eat and don't have time to cook, you're gonna want something relatively quick or pre-prepared. Now, it means you're gonna spend a lot of money going to Whole Foods or Mariano's or Fruitful Yield or you're gonna spend a little less money and go to the other places, I wouldn't go fast food because it's full of trans fats, it's full of uh, or inorganic compounds, and it wasn't prepared properly. So that's gonna get you into more trouble. So uh, again, I was saying, if you don't prep your food or have time to prep your food, you will eat and be happy f quick, but you'll also be guilty later because sooner or later you're, you're going to have to pay for that in the diseases worsening that you're dealing with. If you plan your meals, plan your week, uh, meal planning, it can be relatively fast, but you have to start to get used to it. Well, when you plan your meals uh, and you get really good at it and you maintain a rhythm, 
you will not only you'll you'll have to devote time, no question. You'll have to. De I usually devote time on Sundays to make sure everything is, for the week is prepared, and I got it. I don't have to search for it; it's right there in front of me. And sometimes I don't have to take advantage of that because um, my family might be able to have a meal that I don't see any meat in. I can take advantage of that. I just have to, like this week, I had a lot of leftover stuff that I bought uh, pre-prepared as vegetarian, and this is great. Now I have to eat it all, but. Um, no, I don't really have to eat it all, it, but it's nice to have extra. But if you prepare ahead of time, then you don't have to, number one, you'll feel better when you have the food available, and number two, you won't feel guilty. Number three, you know you're going to reverse your disease process instead of the other way, not preparing, not devoting any time to a plan, and then feeling guilty and worsening your disease process. We have to reverse this. I mean, the, if you look at those top three diseases, it's usually from overindulgence. And it's also from overindulgence of damaging foods. So I think the human body can heal up. We just have to stop putting in damage and insult and then just allow this body to do what it has to do and it can do it, but uh, not if it's overwhelmed with decades of damage. So when you're uh, switching to a vegetarian diet or mostly a whole food plant-based diet, um, Yes, the majority of plants do have, I think if you measure it out, there are more carbohydrates. But even with Dean Ornish's work, uh, with plant food, low fat, and minimal protein, he still showed reversibility of heart disease. He also showed reversibility of prostate cancer. So with small uh, study groups, but still, I think that it's enough to say it's the right direction. Uh, in time, and I have no problem with the keto practitioners or the Atkins practitioners, or the paleo practitioners. I think my patients that do that, uh, the ones that sustain it, do have very good success. The question will be in the long run, and that has yet to be seen, will uh, those other practices that do low carbohydrate, will they result in heart disease? They might help you with weight loss and uh, glycemic index loss and maybe a change in carbo uh, your, your lipid panel. But will that equal longevity? We, we have yet to see that. Uh, but if you, again, if you, it, hopefully it will show in time with uh, the right studies, all mindful eating will be successful when, as long as you lose weight, exercise, and take care of stress. Uh, but uh, if you look at populations around the world that make it to 100, 103, that's the Dan Buettner uh, Blue Zone books, they have high fiber, they have vegetables, they have also meat, and they have fat. So they even have alcohol. So. Uh, just have to kind of find your way, don't eat so much, and be mindful of what you eat. So, with regards to the whole food plant-based approach, uh, you don't have to just take your carbohydrates and assume you're going to have, Ben, uh, uh, you don't have to assume you're going to have um, high calories and uh, high glycemic index. Now, check out my videos on glycemic load and glycemic index. I'll put a link down below. Now, sometimes what you can do is, even though the ingredients of what you're eating individually might have a high or low glycemic index, try to keep it low. The lower the glycemic index, the slower it raises your blood sugar. And I think there's still ways to combine different ingredients in your meal so that your blood sugar stays stable instead of flopping back up and down. So how do we do that? Well, the, the basics are there. You try to mix your vegetables with uh, or your uh, uh, glycemic index carbohydrates with high fiber. Acacia is a form of fiber. There's also a psyllium husk. Used to use that uh, back in uh, about a year or two ago, uh, just to show my patients. I don't have a cholesterol problem, but uh, uh, I just show my patients on how to use it. So I'll, I'll also put links to that down below. Fiber will slow down uh, the glycemic uh, food that you're having from entering into the bloodstream. It'll normalize it or, or, or keep it stable. So will protein. Protein, especially plant-based protein. This is uh, plant-based protein. I also have pea uh, protein. I've got hemp protein. I've got brown rice. I've used them all before. But uh, protein in plant or animal form will slow down that uh, carbohydrate from rocking into your uh, bloodstream fast. If a, if a food is processed or a vegetable is processed, then it gets from the stomach into the bloodstream very quickly. And we don't want that. What we want is slow absorption. We want slow rise in the blood glucose levels and slow insulin levels to match that rise. If you have that, you, you won't have insulin resistance and you'll hopefully have satiety and less obesity. 
if you eat fast, if you eat foods that have been highly processed, they go from stomach into bloodstream massive uh, amounts quickly. And then that's what tell, tells a pancreas to make a whole bunch of insulin. And then you have these spikes in sugar, spikes in insulin, drops in sugar, drops in insulin, spikes, drops, spikes, drops. That's when you become insulin resistant and diabetic. So protein, fiber are ways to do it. And these are plant. And, and by the way, when you do, do a fiber, uh, high vegetable diets or high plant diets, it also uh, improves fibers necessary to feed the little bacteria that are in your colon and your digestive tract. So it's very important to have fiber, which I think is one of the downfalls of the keto diet. If you lack fiber, you can really uh, starve those uh, little animals, you know, those bacteria that are those probiotics in your gut, and uh, you're not gonna be able to build that up. This is my also substitute uh, hot dog. It's just tofurkey. It's mostly organic soy, non-GMO. Um, but it tastes great Italian. Um, this is also protein. So uh, beans are a great uh, go-to as far as satiety. Uh, beans, legumes, uh, peas, as I mentioned, seeds and nuts. Those are all uh, foods, plant-based, that are very good for satiety. Also slow to make the glycemic index, or I'm sorry, the glucose level go higher. Um, and uh, uh, very protective. Nice book, uh, very basic, but in case you want, there are, you should read on insulin uh, resistance, glycemic index. We used to follow calories back when, but everybody follows glycemic index now. Again, I have it on my videos. If you're uh, more interested than the videos, you can look up T. Colin Campbell's um, uh, website, and I'll put a link down below, or Forks Over Knives. They actually have a link where you can, they can plan your meal. You can see what, uh, uh, a healthy vegetarian dominant uh, diet looks like. So Ben, good question. Don't, don't feel that you're um, going into danger while we try to get you used to this and while you dial in your nutrition and dial in the diabetes and hopefully have a good response autoimmune wise, uh, uh, six to eight weeks to kind of work on it. But every day should be a learning process. And again, uh, Try to plan forward, try to learn, try to get some reading in, and you won't be frustrated. So good question, Ben. For the rest of you, thanks for watching. I always appreciate you for subscribing. Otherwise, I'll see you next time in the clinic.